viewers to another episode in a series of episodes that are focused on the 2024 GCE Mathematics paper team. So if you haven't seen the other episode, please check out on our YouTube channel or download the companion app that you are seeing on the screen. You find a lot of resources that is going to be helpful to ensure that you armor and ace that exam of yours. Let us look at question 8. Start the diagram below and answer the questions that follow. Question A. Describe fully the single transformation which maps triangle A, B, C on two triangle G, H, I. So let me go step by step. So let us start first by answering question M. Then we can move to the next question. So if you look at the pairs of these sides, you notice that we are going to have A, which matches with G. Then we are going to have B, which matches with H. Then we are going to have C, which matches with I. So the first question is, as the area of these two triangles change, it has not changed. So if it does not change, it can only be translation, rotation, or reflection. So if you look at these two, are the corresponding side facing each other? No, because of course A and G are facing each other, but if you, if you notice, H and B, they are not. And also, C and D, I, they are not. So it cannot be reflection. So that one is out. Then, the third one we are looking at now, is it translation or rotation? So to know whether it's trans translation or rotation, we join the corresponding lines, we join these straight lines. If these lines are moving in parallel to each other, then it's translation, but they are not moving. So in this case, see, translation is out, it's rotation. Now, if it's rotation, the next thing that we need to do is we need to find the center of rotation. We need to draw a perpendicular line to these two lines that we joined. You can pick any two pairs. The point of intersection of the perpendicular lines is the center of rotation. So you notice that for the blue lines, it's obvious because this is 2, negative 2, this is positive 2. It will pass through the origin, like that is y axis. Then we do for the red one, we're going to use the, the ruler protractor to bisect this line which is something like this i'm just using the left one so when you use it correctly you discover that the the perpendicular will pass through this the center again so this point of intersection where these two lines are meeting is the center of rotation once we establish that the next thing is to find the angle of rotation that's the next thing and in which direction so let me just try to clean it up a bit so that you can see so i'm going to join any of these two points to the center that what you notice is the angle of rotation is this is the angle of rotation 90. so in this direction the clockwise is 90. the anti-clockwise it is going to be like that so it's going to be 360 minus 90 which will be 270 and clockwise the clockwise is 90 degrees then we would have answered that question so we are going to say it is a clockwise a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees about the origin which is 0 comma 0 then you would have answered the a we got to beam the triangle which is triangle ABC is mapped onto triangle PQR PQR which is this one by enlargement find the matrix representing this transformation find the matrix representing this transformation so the question is for us to find the, the matrix so let me just go on a bigger one then we are moving from A to, to B so we can solve this equation by just uh, getting some few points so we get the pairs and solve so we know that for enlargement the matrix is given by k 0 then 0 k like that that's what it's given by so there are two ways we can solve that we can just solve the usual matrix or we can join the points so let's start with the way we can solve using the usual matrix so we are going to get the corresponding points so we are told PQR. So this one is A, then PQR, then B is C, this one, then we have C is R. That's what it means. So I'm going to pick two corresponding points, then solve. 
the equation. So what equation am I going to solve? So I'm going to solve the equation uh, x1, then y1, which is the image, must equal to k, then 0, then 0, then k, where k is the enlargement factor. Then we have now x1, the x which is the, the object, then y, like this. Y, where x1 is the image or the outcome, which is pqr. So in that case, I can just pick any coordinates. So in this case, I'm going to pick p, which is the first one. So I'm going to pick, this is p, which is negative 4, comma, negative 4, as in. So we have negative 4, comma, negative 4. Then is equal to k, then 0, then 0, then k. Then we are going to pick the corresponding, which is m, which is in, uh, 2, comma, negative 2, like this. Then we solve these equations. So I'm, I, I, I know that negative 4, then 4 is equal to, so it will be this one multiplied by this one. So it will be k times 2 is 2k, then plus 0 times negative 2 is 0. Then to be 0, which will be now this one, 0 times 2 is 0, plus 2 times negative 2, which is negative 2. So this one is no longer plus, but now it becomes a minus, minus 2k. So what this one tells me is, tells me negative 4 is equal to 2k. Meaning, I divide by 2, by 2 both sides, meaning k is equal to negative 2. To just confirm, I'll pick the second pair, which is 4 is equal to negative 2k then divide by negative 2 both sides so meaning k is equal to negative 2 like that so meaning this matrix this matrix now becomes you can light it from here because there is enough space after solving the matrix becomes now uh, it was k so it would be negative 2 then 0 then 0 negative 2 it will be like this this will be the matrix representing this transformation so just use pick any pairs you could have picked q and d and b or r and c you still get negative two alternatively you can just join this line this line to this line then this distance here this distance here this line you compare this distance to be twice if you notice from here is two here is two it's like that then or you join that point that's how you do it then let us look at equation c a stretch represented by matrix one like one zero in first column second column zero two maps triangle a b c onto triangle d e f not in the diagram find the coordinates of d e f and this is three marks this is a bit involving so we need to solve each pair of the sides. So each pair of triangle A, we need to multiply by this matrix to find the, the output. So let us do this step by step. So if you look at the first coordinate, the first coordinate of A, let me use the bigger one. The first coordinate of A, let me just clean it up here, is negative 2 comma negative 2. That's the first one. So to find the coordinate of D, the coordinate of D, we're going to multiply this negative 2 comma 2 by this matrix. That's what we need to do. That's the first step. So let us find D, D coordinates. So it's going to be the matrix itself, which is 1, 0, then 0, 2, multiplied by, we are going to have negative, which is 2, negative 2. Then this should give us the coordinates of D, which is X, like that. The output is the coordinate of D. That's what we are going to do for all of them. So because this matrix is a 0, as a 0 diagonal somewhere, it's they are easier to multiply. So I know that when I multiply this one by this one, it will just be 1 times 2 is a 2 plus 0 times 2, it will just be a 2. Then 0 times 2 
multiply plus 0 times 2 is 0 plus 2 times negative 2 it will be negative 4 so meaning uh, uh, x comma y so meaning d is d is nothing but 2 comma negative 4 as simple as that then we go to so this is a coordinate of d the next one is is e so coordinates of e of e that's the next one so how do you find the coordinates of e so what we do is we have 4 comma negative 2 so it will be 1 i can use black here 1 0 2 0 we multiply by now it will be 4 comma negative 2 this should give me the coordinate which is x y these are the images that we are looking for remember we are looking for d e f okay d e f so now e we just multiply again it's going to be this multiply by that so it will be 1 times 4 so 4 plus e, 0 times negative 2 is going to give me 4 then next it will be 0 times 4 is 0 plus 2 times e, negative 2 it will be negative 4 so meaning the values of e which is e which is x comma y so e equals 4 comma negative 4 like that then last one we need to find the, the value of uh, f the value of f so similarly we are going to do the same to be coordinate of f so it will be again the same matrix which is 1 0 then 0 2 then we need to look for the value the coordinates of c what are the coordinates of c so if you look at the coordinates of c you see this coordinates negative 4 y then 4x so it's 4 comma negative 4 so you go there so it will be 4 comma negative 4 then when we multiply this one we are going to get the value of x and y and these are the coordinates of f so it will be again this one multiplied by this one so it's going to be 1 times 4 is a 4 plus 0 times a negative 4 is a is a 4 so this is 4 then it will be 0 times a 4 is a 0 plus a 2 times negative 4 it's going to be negative 8 so these are the values of x and y respectively for f so f is 4 comma negative 8 so these are the coordinates so once you do that you would have answered this question and you get the three marks so i've moved to the cleaner page so that i answer question d properly triangle klm is the image of triangle abc under a shear find the shear factor and the invariant line so we're looking to find the shear factor and the invariant line so there are a few things that we need to know under shear transformation that lengths in the direction of the invariant lines do not change. So in the direction of line, the invariant line, the length will not change. So if you compare these two, we need to know in which direction are the length not changing. So if you compare, you notice that BC and LM they are the same. This is 2, this is 6, the difference here is 2. If you come here, this is negative 2, this is negative 4, the difference there is 2. So meaning, in the direction of the invariant line, the sides will not change. So the invariant line should be definitely invariant line thus is, is y-axis. That's how we identify the invariant line under the shear transformation. Then we need to look for the the shear factor so i'll call it k as per standard so this one is given by distance moved by moved by a point over distance of that point of the point from invariant line i'll just call it ir invariant I L invariant line because of space. So if you pick one point, so you can say 
if you pick let us say for example pick point b how far is this point b from its corresponding point what is that point the corresponding point is l okay so we know that we have six then this is six under y axis then this is negative two so it will be minus negative two then how far is this point from the invariant line which is y in this case so this is form so it will be four y axis is zero so we're going to have eight divided by four which is equal to two so the shear factor is two in that case if you picked any other corresponding point you could have picked let us say for example uh, which point you could have picked in m okay and c it will still be four negative four to negative to positive four it will be eight then is is two is four centimeter from the environment line it will still give you two that's how it works then if you picked a it will be how many two points from the environment line then the difference between these two is a four so two divided by four it will be two so therefore a uh, shear factor is two so once you answer like this you are good to go and you get these 12 marks so thank you for joining me in this episode join me in the next episode as we look at question uh, nine